Hey, intrepid viewers, and welcome back to 80 Days. I recently discovered that time is moving very quickly, which may be a bad thing. Maybe I've been daily dallying too long. I wonder if I let the game sit here long enough if I can just fail. Like, 80 days can just pass, and I've sat here like a statue in Munich. I don't know. Oh, time doesn't pass while I'm reading. Thank you, 80 Days. That, uh, would be ruinous otherwise. Okay, that is a great relief off my mind. The Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year previously. Thus, I flaunted my French accent that I've been doing this whole LP. Here in Victor City, I had no interest I in coddling others' sensibilities. That is, until the concierge in our hotel quite deliberately dropped a mug of coffee into my lap. Free coffee! Quite a sensitive moment for poor Pajpartu. I took them into task. I endured the insult with I made sure to spill. Mm hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, Passport 2. How are we playing him? We're playing him. I said stoic, right? He's pretty stoic. I endured the insult with dignity, sucking the coffee from my shirt. Later, Monsieur Fogg congratulated me on my forbearance, declaring simply, quietly, Good show. Relationship with Fogg improved slightly. Are we neutral? Our character is now organized. Is there any way I can check my character? I don't even know what organized means. Okay, explore. I guess I can't leave. Explore. Four hours later. New routes discovered. Great, Venice, that's what I want. There was little daylight in Munich. The sky was shredded in steam and oil. Fumes from the tractors and hydraulic excavators in the streets. Uh, a place of industry, then. Uh, whose citizens wore dark cloaks to protect their finery from the soot. I brushed a few specks of dirt from my collar, absent-mindedly. Far more intrigued by the gleaming machines remaking the city's skyline. Rumor had it that this work was doing was the doing of the Bavarian king. I love his pie. His cream pies. Um who had become possessed with steam power, and was spending an exorbitant sum on imported machinery and engineering works. The Kingdom of Bavaria had recently joined the German Empire, it appeared, but the king suddenly had much more time on his aristocratic hands. Power and free time are a most potent and dangerous combination. How sanctimonious. As our journey, I fear, proves. Ah, the bank. To... Depart. So I could wait or something. Uh... Why is this orange? Arrives tomorrow. Arrives today. Arrives today. It's a slower option. But... I want to get, I want to take some boat. I guess, ooh, oh, I did want to go to Berlin, didn't I? This is one of those secret routes I discovered, though, from all that super sweet sleuthing I did, so I kind of want to take this route, but time's a-wasting. <gasps> <gasps> Italy? Germany. Or, I mean, Greece, not Italy. Venice, Italy. Venice, Italy, Venice, Greece. I, why don't I know that? That's like a friggin' major city. That's quite embarrassing. Edit that out. Uh, ooh, Athens. Athens, Greece, Venice, Italy. Okay. Yeah, let's take the boat. I'll take the boat. Do it. The- Ooh, it's a private car. How titillating. I suspect this departure could be altered. I say we leave now. My gun says it. It seems- It seems they're pretty demanding. The ticket will require a further sixty dollars. Can I opt not to do that, to negotiate and stuff? Because that wasn't a super great negotiation. Embark. Aha, two luggage. The the open road. A bothersome route. Oh, apparently when I'm in alone in a car with Mr. Fogg, we kind of bicker. Oh, well. Nothing to do about that now. Oh, oh, is I see. It's just a chair on a motor. That's not much of a car. You said private car. You really meant public display and conveyance. We hired a private driver, I thought he drove cars, an oil-guzzling Bozek car, who took off and who took off an high speed once we were aboard. Uh, let's not, uh, oh man, I, I really don't want to talk to Phineas Fogg. We know we're going to beggar, he's going to say, you dirty frog Frenchman. He's, he's racist, it's not me, it's Fogg's clearly just not a nice guy to be around, so I kind of just want to sleep through it. Don't know how feasible that actually would be. Uh, let's, 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 look, let's stare at the car. It appeared to be reinforced with metal strips and brackets. 
that looked a lot like parts from broken farm equipment. The driver himself had haymaker hands that suggested he had not long ago made hay, been a laborer on the land. I asked him about himself as we drove, but he replied in monosyllables so our conversation degenerated into a guessing game. Was he married? Yes, his wife was called Hilde. Why would I ask if he designed the car himself? Is everyone here an inventor? Uh... Was he or had he been a soldier? No, and that war with France had seemed most unnecessary to him. Did he like Venice? Yes, it was very beautiful, especially at night. I exhausted him. He fell asleep, we crashed and died. We fell silent, but for the sputtering and spurting of the engine as it exploded rhythmically beneath us. Put put. The news! Watch the news, the times. Phileas Fogg attempts round the world adventure. That was a waste of a newspaper. I learned nothing. By midway, by midday, we had crested the mountains and our journey down was almost steam free. I like steam. Um, we rolled with the driver pumping the brake handle. I relished the fresh air and I could see my master did as well. And then, ah, oh, the Adriatic. Yes, that one. And then there was the Adri Adriatic Sea. I read it the first time. Sparkling as though encrusted with jewels. Thoughts of grimy London flew through my head. This was the life. In short, the car did not explode and we were rowed across the gulf to the city of canals. The lamps were just being lit and we lost ourselves in the narrow winding alleys, enjoying the smells of grilling fish and red wine, and the sparkle of glass from shop windows. This was a pretty place we had arrived in, indeed. Relationships with Fog improved slightly, yes! So this is one of those relationships where if you try to hold him close, the more he wants to run, so we're gonna turn and push, and he'll come to us. That's how you do it. Venice, the city of Canals is right, that's what he said. Oh, my health, I'm dying. The medallion could be sold handsomely here. <coughs> Let's plan. What is the plan? To Athens. Wow. They got spent. I can't stop in Dubrovnik. I have to go straight to Athens. Maybe I have to talk to somebody. Departs tomorrow. Okay, sure. That is the plan. Take this journey, we'll have to spend the night. What, I wonder, would be the cost to me not planning this and simply trying to book it tomorrow? Okay, well, uh, how do I get out of here? I did it. It's booked. It's planned. So planned, you guys. Okay, back to Venice. Uh, can't explore, can't bank, can't market. Let's sleep. Do -do -do. I, we, oh, he's hanging out with us. He's a friendly little farmer driver, man. We healed a bit. How much did we heal? Four per night. I was walking along a canal in Venice when I found myself in the midst of a group of revelers. They wore a fabulous array of masks, some beak-nosed, others brightly feathered, and even more, I'm sorry, and even some spun of fine glittering wire. I bowed in greeting and gave them such a surprise that one tripped, turned, and then tumbled into the canal, promptly drowning. Her friends seemed drunkenly unconcerned and fell about in peeling laughter as the woman cursed and thrashed in the dark water. As the cold waters slowly closed over her head, the laughter died. I know. Um, I shook my head in despair. Uh, I dove in. I dove to the rescue. Am I gonna lose money for this? Reaching her in a few strokes, zoot the lords! The water was cold. She kicked and fought as I halted to a nearby flight of steps. I punched her out. Fimetti is a daughter of the canal. One of her friends put in. You should have left her in it. Another drunken youth agreed. It's the only time she bathes. Fiametti coughed and choked as I hauled her from the water. I looked her over. Her mask was long gone and her fine clothes ruined, but her eyes gleamed. Who are you? she demanded, seeming to see me for the first time. Her friends made various kissing noises and suggested a variety of improbable roles for me. A clown, one said. No, no, another interjected. An agent of the Pope. Yet another added Soto voice. Fiametti's foreign lover, which caused them to all laugh as Fiametti. I don't have no Italian guides to pronunciation, like the M could be silent for all I know. Cursed them with admirable thoroughness. 
Are you all right? I asked with some concern. Of course, she replied haughtily, wringing out her hair. I am Venetian. I cannot drown. It is simply not possible. I shoved her back in to test this theory. Do not mind Fiametti, her friend remarked softly. She is angry because of her work and because of what happened to her brother. Uh, oh, which, which, which story do we want to unpack? We got options. Uh, I care more about her work, quite frankly. What is the matter with her work, I asked. The blasted school, they are the matter, Fiametti interjected angrily. They think they can replace me with one of their empty-souled machines. Shh. Her friend implored, looking suddenly sober. Do not curse them so loudly. What is the squala? The squal, squala, squ squ squala are the Venetian artificers guild, she told me. They control all of Italy, but they will not have my canals. Ooh. Double meaning. What in the word did that mean? Well, a lot of things, quite frankly. I stepped back to Monsieur Fogg as the revelers opened another bottle of wine to appease their canal-sodden friend. Well, that went super not anywhere. We have time, right? Right. Explore. What if I miss my plane? Wowie zowie! Too bad I already booked a thing, right? I was, waiting, I, was, uh, I was waiting my turn at a gondola rank near the Rialto Bridge when a gondolier from across the canal waved frantically to catch my attention. Monsieur, I will take you. Take me now. Uh, aha. I recognized that voice. I assume I did. Mon dieu! It was the very woman I had pulled from the canal the night before. I waved her over. Having tired of waiting in line, she made a sharp turn through the water, earning the ire of several other boatmen who had who had to swerve to avoid her. Fiametti, the booking agent who ran the rank, shook his fist in her direction. Leave my customers alone! You deserve no customers, Zorzi! Fiametti shouted back, ignoring me entirely. Was it possible she did not remember me? Those creatures of yours are not gondoliers. They know nothing of the soul of Venice. The soggy, sodden soul. I do not understand her meaning. Until I peered at one of the gondolas in the rank. That one. Parbleu! The oarsmen of the stern were machines of fearsome inhumanity. Their faces were covered by feathered carnival masks and their hands tapered into oars. Signor, my automaton gondoliers are the pride of Venice, Zorzi insisted breathlessly as he reached me. They are guaranteed safe by the squall. Our local artificers guild, Fiametti, here is a troublemaker. This is so racist. From the water, Fiametti called. I am a true gondolier. I nodded and stepped in to Fiametti's gondola. I prefer people to machines, I told Zorzi with a shrug. Not true. Not true. Viametti gave him a perfectly executed mocking courtesy, curtsy as he pulled away. No mean feat while also holding an oar and balancing on the prow of the low craft. Zorzi supported the ri oh god dang it. Risorgimento. I should have gone to Berlin. The Italian unification, Fiametti told me as she pushed us forward. Now he's a bootlicker, the scuola, and dabbles in their infernal mechanicals. Why do you hate automata? They took my brother. I asked curiously. I do not hate them. I fear them. They are soulless. The Pope has declared them abominations, and yet they roam the streets and canals of Venice. Do continue. She took a deep breath. It is an open secret that the scholar run Italy in all but name. The king is their puppet. We are a kingdom run by artifices. I sound like friggin' uh, the master of disguise. Well-known character for his impeccable impersonations. Um, better the artificers than the Pope. Oh, mad Pope slamage. Let's. Uh, is that is that is that is that so bad? I wondered aloud. Progress is progress. Surely that's a terrible sentence to say. She spat in the water. The gondolas slid onward. I listened to Fiametti. I listened as Fiametti raged against the machine. The school, the squala has money and power, and their infernal devices, they are an impossible enemy. She gave me a sharp look before tugging a length of grey and red braid thoughtfully. But there are those who will fight still. The Zwa, the, oh God, the Zauvi, the Z Zauvi Rome will never surrender to the squala. These are made up words. 
I barely knew how to respond. I smiled weakly in reply. I barely knew how to respond. That could sum up this game, I suppose. And lapsed into silence. We rode, we rode, or she rode. Really, I mean, don't, don't appropriate her labors, bub. We rode past Palazzo, Palazzo, Palazzo's and Gothic churches, and each more grand than the last. Fiametti gave me a potted history, a potted history of Venice in her own idiosyncratic style. It seemed the foundations were being fitted with water pumps, that sounds good to me, to push water downwards and thereby lift the city up. The Squala will make Venice into a ship, Fiametti told me. No doubt they will sail it around the world to make war. When will it be ready? Perhaps in 200 years. Nothing is built quickly around here. Your character is now well healed. So I've lost my organization. And I've become... I still don't know what well healed means. I didn't look it up. Uh, market. To the market. Oh. Oh, I can buy these things. I don't give a crap. What could I sell? Oh, the medallion. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're... Oh, 1,500 in Karachi. Where's Karachi? I should pay better attention to these things. Part of the air traveler. That's what I want. I want parts of the air traveler. In Antalya. I want this railway hat. What is this? Part of the gentleman traveler's set. The Englishman wardrobe set. I don't need a gentleman traveler. I don't want to try and collect all the bits. I do kind of want the railway man set so I can just rob my way through the trains. Let's do that. Give me that. Bam. Uh, 4,000 by Grabthar's hammer. What a margin. Let's. Let's. European shipping timetable. Sophos. I don't know where Sophos is. Ah, aha. Routes of shipping around Greece and Turkey will be visible on the globe. What's that zero? Oh, it's free. Poof. Yeah, it's free, right? Oh, no, it cost me a dollar each time. I just lost a dollar. Twice. I'm a fool. Okay, well, we got that. Okay, cool. Hairbrush. I don't give a crap. The valetting set. No, screw that. Let's get out of here. New art discovered from the timetables. That does me no good. That does me a lot of good. Ah, Antalya is there. To the market. Antalya, Antalya, give me that. We are gonna make a killing. Okay, depart. Poof. Uh, to Athens. Yes, that one. Do it. Wait, what? Did I miss the window? In three days! Oh, oh we discovered this. Let's go by land. Arrives tomorrow, yes. Oh, oh. my plan is a shambles because I didn't pay attention to anything. I'm afraid to go here because it wasn't guaranteeing me there. Sure, let's hang out in the city of machinery, see if we can, uh, ah, this one. For all the money in England, thoroughly ungentlemanly behavior. That is a huge sum, but we're going to make it all back, right? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it? Do it. Oh, uh, what time? Tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay, just got to be careful, I guess. Plan. So we're just doing right. Let me do it again. Okay, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Be there or be square, pass pup to... Don't. Stop. Stop. Okay. With what remained of the day... Let's get some S-links, I guess, going. I attended to Monsieur Fogg, ensuring he was comfortable. They have strengthened slightly. Fan-tastic. Depart. Alonzi. Get the cuss out of here. Go! Bwah! Sweltering heat, mild seas. What a top-heavy boat. I am not comfortable in this boat. We left Italy directly, boarding a ferry to take us to Athens via the port of Petraz to the east coast. On the east coast, rather. Our cash reserves seem to be running low, Bash Oh, how, how did that ha What happened to all the money? Actually, I just realized... There are like two stops in between now and me getting... selling that mask for a billion dollars. I might have just screwed this Let's Play 
right out of the starting gate, pretty much. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's not talk to you. Goodbye. The boat was crowded with little room for luggage or preambulation. But with plenty of characters. I fell into broad conversation with a man named Monsieur Mykos. Mykos? Mykos. Who worked in Venice, but was a, a, a fianced. Ah. Ah, he's like, ah, I've never heard that word before. That means it's the fiancé to an Italian girl from a small village in Anatolia. It is best to marry outside of one's own, I tell you, he enthused. One's own? You mean like stop masturbating? What does that mean? For we are all citizens of the world now, are we not? Uh... Uh... I'm... Why do you... I... I yeah, that one. Why do you suppose that, I asked. Well, let me tell you this. Where are you from? This is better than an Italian accent, I guess. Uh, Paris. Can you tell? Oh. And yet, here you are, on your way to Athens. I have found love already. His name is Fogg. I said, casting my eyes down. Oh, that is the way of it, then. His eyes glinted. I will ask no more and only wish you well of it. He bid me good day, and I wondered what my master's feelings on the subject of international romance might be. You'll need to wire London for funds as soon as we find a bank. I'm sure they will be prompt. Are you? Fog, let's comb fog. Let's groom my fog. I want to pet my fog. The ferry plowed on through the sun-dappled waters. I spent my time aboard... Waiting on my master's needs. And keeping him comfortable. Tell me, Passepartout, he murmured thoughtfully. Did you ever train to be a valet? What a thing to be asked. I redoubled my efforts, but but to little avail. Maybe I did shit about that comb. As evening drew in the in, the boat turned towards the hovering coastline, and we docked at Patras, where a small fleet of chuffing cars waited to take us across to Athens. Groovy. Okay, to the bank. To the to the plan. What is the plan, Stan? Arrives tomorrow. Thirty-two. We can make that no sweat. Tomorrow before 7 p.m. Great. Sounds good to me. Sleep. We will pass the night here. 7 p.m. The hotel was too expensive. We had no option but to curl up in a shady spot under a tree like wild dogs and try our luck outside. I lost health. I could barely believe what we had been reduced to. It's for the greater good. So early on in our trip. Don't judge me, game. I thought I was going to die. What a dramatic... My relationship with the flock deteriorated. This is a disaster. Just call the whole thing off. Bank opens at 10. We'll explore. Why is it two different routes? That's actually kind of cool, having options. My master was not, as a rule, particularly interested in the fabulous locales and exotic cities we journeyed through. Athens was the exception that proved the rule. His sudden interest was not limited to the city. He fixed me with a look. Do you speak Greek? Ah, uh, ooh, I had spent a glorious summer with a Greek contortionist. Sure, that one. Who could do the most elegant a la bec penche? Mais oui, monsieur, I smiled sharply. Repeating a few of the phrases taught me by the paramour, by my paramour, Monsieur Fogg blushed vermilion. That, Passepartout, he cleared his throat, is a very specialized vocabulary. Despite my master's grasp of ancient Greek, the demotic variant more commonly spoken on the street eluded him. We were reduced to... Mimery. Asking for directions through a combination of mime, moi, opposite quotations from Homer, my master, and half-remembered flattery, moi encore. We picked our way through the labyrinthine streets of the Placa and up to the Acropolis. I checked my watch discreetly? Ruins from the past held no attraction for me, especially when dinner and a thick coffee hung in the balance. As we stood admira admiring the architecture, I was rudely knocked into by a small man with thick glasses. My hand flew to my wallet. Maybe I would have lost all, lost all my money anyway. This one. I caught his arm in case he should fall, and he smiled and thanked me quickly. My apologies, my apologies, he murmured. Uh, too occupied by the sight, perhaps, I suggested cheerfully, and the man smiled. 
I have seen it many times before, though, yes, it, it is most impressive. Oh no, this is the wrong voice. Uh, I, 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 I have seen it many times before, uh, the, the yes, uh, it is most impressive. He put out his hands to shake. Uh, Dimitri Sophos, uh, I'm the owner of, uh, uh, um, modest, mo modest shipping freight company based here. Oh, then perhaps you could help us. We are going around the world. Sophos smiled and began to recite the routes and timings of his company. The one of most interest was a boat sailing to Cairo, which was leaving the next day. I thanked him, though it seemed unlikely we would take it. He beamed and wobbled away. A man with sea legs, I observed. Monsieur Fogg, still gazing at the Parthenon, did not reply. I doubt he noted a word of the entire exchange. My character is now suave, but my relationship has deteriorated slightly. What happens? Will we come to, like, blows? I cannot go to Cairo? That would ruin me financially. Okay, to the bank! Why are we money? We must visit the bank, Monsieur Fogg declared. A robbery! Ooh, that's exciting, but no. You have additional funds? I am a gentleman. They would extend me credit if required, he replied. Uh, they would extend me credit if I required, he replied. But do you suppose I put my entire fortune into a carpet bag under your supervision? I did not answer. I regarded the bank as we entered. It was a small affair, but efficiently looked after, and we were quick to s and we were quickly seen too. You wish to withdraw funds, we were told. I warn you, it may take some time. You know... I'm gonna miss my super cheap... boat. So forget it, that will not do. I wish I could wire it to a different bank. That will not do, I told the manager. We swept out of the bank. We will need to find some other way to fund ourselves, the master declared. How about I just get the duck out of Fodge? Let's go. Oh wait, that's Izmir. Mmm. Do I think we can get here on $77? We will have, what, $45 remaining after this. Let's do it. Embark. Oh, minus 12, no. Sweltering heat, my only weakness. The Aegean Ferry. We boarded the daily ferry across the Aegean Sea. Aegean? Aegean? I think it's Aegean Sea. And then... Stayed below and in the shade. Protective of our delicate complexions, as though the Indian sun still to come would not harm them. Why did that ruin my relationship with Phineas Fogg? I will converse with you. I'm gonna go against my rule. Oh, not with you. Uh, greeting, Monsieur Mikos. Passport too, my good friend! Begin conversation, Izmir. I didn't know about Izmir. The Ottoman inventor, Hayyan al Safa, has died. Uh, I don't, I don't know what these options are. This one. Is it possible to go from Izmir to Antalya? Here's something I do know. Antalya is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Antalya. This one. Is it possible to go from Izmir to Thessaloniki? No idea, but now Thessaloniki is named after the half-sister of Alexander the Great. Well, I got two things out of him. Neither one particularly useful. Our passengers milled about, talking loudly and drinking ouzo, chilled by chips of ice carved from blocks in the hold of the ship. The boat had the air of a market cafe. Or the gathered crowd before a concert. Clearly, sunshine is good for the soul. Halfway through the day, I saw Mikos, my friend, from the boat from Venice. Yeah, we just freaking talked to him. He weighed from halfway up a steam stack where he was working. I waved back. And distracted him! He lost his grip and tumbled over the side. I shouted for help. Pointing to the water as Mikos bobbed under the wake and then resurfaced some distance away. An alarm sounded. The boat lurched to a slow halt, then turned and began to creep back to the water. Men with long hooks leaned over the sides with great concern. It was my fault. I stayed back, determined not to cause any more trouble. Several hours passed, and finally the call went up. Mikos had been sighted. He was hauled up on a deck where he shivered but smiled. Pass, but do you dog, he called out. Were you trying to kill me? Uh, you should be more careful. I called back, and he nodded. That I should. That I should. I could see the captain of the boat watching us and making a mental note, and I suddenly felt terribly sorry for Mikos. Just now? You're a dick. But looking next at Monsieur Fogg's face, I saw something of a similar calculation going on there. Relations did deteriorated slightly. My character is now polished. Watch me gleam. Uh, let's con... news. 
Squala raids anti-automaton rebel hideouts. That's what I call news. Oh, we're dying. I also need a relationship meter. The boat moved on through the water, making up for lost time, but with the shorelines highly treacherous, we had been forced to anchor overnight. Monsieur Fogg was, unsurprisingly, somewhat agitated. Let us hope your friendliness will not cost us too dearly, he remarked before sweeping away into town. I didn't even do anything! You're a dick. Good gracious, this is rather more exhausting than I anticipated. Yeah, screw you. I don't like you. Okay. Uh, yeah, we will sleep. The medallion could be sold here. Once again, we could not afford the hotel, and we died. Blah blah blah, night with Glenn Hard, gonna die. Relationship to Shady Spaley. Uh, I guess it looks... Oh, wait, wait, two seconds. How do I check my inventory? Ah, the harbor bag. Medallion. Ah, Karachi. Well, I may have to fence it here. Yeah. Okay. To the market. Whoa, machetes. Safety harness, the heavy storm set. Taggle must. A length a long length of indigo cotton wrapped and worn with the head to protect from sand. Desert traveler a water bata. Desert traveler. Okay, so the medallion. We could buy the water bata. Four dollars for two hundred days. That's longer than our friggin' journey. Uh I don't really have a reason to buy anything, though. Let's explore real quick. Explore! Come on! Oh my gosh. I'm done for. I'm ruined! Can't even get to Antalya. Well, with that crushing disappointment, I'm going to end the episode here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This LP may be very short. Very short. <laughs> uh, signature catchphrase.